It was May 18, 2018, when I decided to go see a doctor. And it turns out that I have a PDK. PDK stands for polycystic kidney disease. This is an inherited disease from a parent to a child when a child inherits faulty genes from their parents. Usually children inherit about 20,000 genes from their parents. But only two of these genes are associated with this disease. The first one, the recessive, uh, it usually affects the, child, the children and then it, it leads to kidney failure and some uh, liver issues as well. But the most common type, which we will uh, talk more about, is the autosomal dominant, which affects mostly the adults. Uh, it's the most common inherited kidney disease. Research shows that one in 10 people around the world are at the risk of this disease. An estimate of one, nine in 10 of those with this disease don't even know they have this disease. An estimate of one million people die every year from an untreated kidney disease. And black people are mostly affected by this disease than other races. This is why I wanted to share my story so we can all learn together, educate, and protect our lives. I woke up in the morning of May 14th, just like any other day, went to the bathroom to pee, and to my surprise, my urine was completely red. This is hematuria. It's a condition where you have uh, blood in your urine. I thought, mm, it might be the effect of what I, like what I drank the night before. The night before was um, May 14th, it was Mother's Day, so I had a dinner with my friend and her family, and there I drank some juice, so I thought this might be the cause of it. So the day I was drinking a lot of water and peeing frequently to see if the color of my urine is going to change, but it doesn't. This diagnostic was a big shock because um, I don't know of any family history. I don't drink, I don't smoke. I'm always working out every, almost every day. And I play soccer, tennis, swimming. I'm always on the move. Um, my doctor asked me to come in for a routine checkup, um, the nephrologist, Dr. Yo. And when he started talking, I hear the word dialysis, end stage, kidney transplant. It's like, oh no, that is alarming. I feel so sad, especially the thought of how my mom is going to feel when she heard about this. My mom is always concerned about me. Even though we are thousands of miles apart, she's always checking on me. At first, I was in denial thinking, ah, my, my big boys, like my kidneys, they're going to come around again, they will start walking again. I started eating specific foods that helps improve one's kidney functions, and I avoid eating certain kinds of foods that are rich in protein and potassium and so on, just to reduce the workload of my kidneys. But all this is to no avail. After two years, during this while, I was prepared financially to see um, for a future kidney transplant. And after two years, I started getting weaker, sick almost every day, I lose weight, and feeling sleepy all the time. My doctor decided that I needed dialysis. Dialysis is a process where a machine or a device is used to do the functions of your kidney. There are two types, two kinds. One is a hemodialysis and the other is peritoneal dialysis. For hemodialysis, a machine is either taken home or at the hospital where the machine will be used to filter your blood. And for peritoneal dialysis, a device is inserted under your belly and this device is used to filter your urine. So I choose um, hemodialysis with the hope that I will be under the supervision of the professionals, that is the doctors or the nurses, let's say. Um, this is the hard part. I had to undergo five surgeries to create a vascular access in order to be able to do dialysis. At 
first, Dr. tried my wrist here and that didn't work. Then he tried my forearm here, that also didn't work. And then he tried just a little bit above my elbow. This works for about two months, up until one day just after my dialysis session, the vascular pain that was created just collapsed. And that very day I had to go down again to the operation theater to do another operation on the same location to reactivate this vascular access pain and that couldn't work. So I end up with a central line insertion that is the inside of pipe in my chest to my a big vein that is from my heart and this is what I'm using for dialysis until my um, planned surgery, trachea transplant. Sometimes I'll have sleepless nights due to the thought of like how many very punctures I'm gonna undergo the following day. Um, they claim like um, um, my veins are too small or my skin is too dark so they can see my veins um, well. So sometimes I'll have like um, five to seven very punctures on one arm, could you imagine? Yeah. I count myself one of the lucky ones though Thanks to the unconditional support I get from people all around the world, people that I don't know, from my friends, my family, and my classmates, especially my high school classmates. The fact that you have a life, you have a family, you have friends, you can do things, you can go to places, meet wonderful people, one should cherish every moment of it. We shouldn't take anything for granted because we are nothing without people. Um, I think um, if anyone is able or you can, or we should make it a priority, I think, like check the functions of your kidneys, go and test, see a doctor, check the functions of your kidneys at least once a year, especially when you are at the age of 30 or above. So there are medications that could help in um, reducing the rate at which um, your one's kidneys um, fail to function. So until you are able to have a chance to do a transplant. This YouTube channel will be dedicated in supporting kidney treatments in the Gambia. Your subscription will go a long way in supporting kidney treatments and kidney patients in the Gambia. Thank you.